Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo. I'm from Google. Uh, today, it's my great honor to present on behalf of my collaborators our recent work on cluster anchor regularization to alleviate popularity bias in recommender systems. So here first is the motivation and problem statement. So modern recommender systems are trained on historical user data, and then it's very often that only a small percentage of very popular items dominate the historical user data. So as a result, models trained on those data will further recommend those uh, popular items again. So this creates a feedback loop where those uh, popular items gain even more popularity at the expense of the tail items. So if you look at the figure on the right, uh, it's an illustration of this head-heavy issue in a popular recommender system. So, um, on the x-axis, it shows the item rank percentage, and on the y-axis, is the cumulative percentage of interaction. So for example, if you read, let's say, the 5% point, it means that the most popular 5% of the items contribute to about 97% of all the user interaction. So this means that the hat heavy issue uh, exists in a lot of uh, large-scale recommender systems. And then reducing this popularity bias can benefit all players on the platform. For example, for, for users, it will give them uh, more opportunity to discover new interests instead of just recommending those only popular ones. Whereas for con content creators, especially the new creators, it will give them a chance, a boost, when they first uh, contribute some contents to the platform. And finally, for the platform, it will make it more robust instead of just relying on only a handful of creators or items. But, uh, Reducing popularity bias comes with a lot of challenges, mainly twofold. First of all, we want to balance the tail and head items. So basically, we want to promote the tail items, but we do not want to um, negatively impact the performance of the popular items. This is one thing. The second thing is it would be really challenging to evaluate uh, impacts on reducing popularity bias because by definition, uh, the most of the contributions are from the popular items. And if you improve tail items, it will be very hard to, up to observe the changes. To that end, we propose a new technique called cluster anchor regularization. So the high level idea is we want to facilitate knowledge transfer from those head items to tail items. So here we're talking about an embedding based recommender system in the sense that all the items are associated with an embedding. So the methodology we are proposing here is that first we assume the items are assigned to a cluster based on some shared characteristics. So basically we first partition the whole vocabulary into different clusters, making sure that items within each cluster is in some sense homogeneous. And then we further define something called an anchor for each cluster in the embedding space as well. So basically each cluster will have a learnable anchor you can think of this anchor as, an, as a representation of the knowledge center. So again, if you look at the figure on the right, it's a high-level illustration of this idea. So all the nodes here uh, represent items from one cluster. And then the blue nodes are the source items or head items. Those are the popular items. And then their embedding are often better learned because there are more of them in the training data, and the model has seen more of them, so their embeddings are better learned. Whereas the red ones are the tail items. Those could be fresh items, those could be items we do not have enough, enough exposure on the platform yet, uh, and those are the items embeddings we want to improve. And finally, the green one represents the cluster anchor. So the high-level idea is that we want to pull the anchor towards the head item embeddings because they are better learned. And then we want to pull the tail item embeddings towards the anchor. So that, that's how we achieve this kind of knowledge transfer from head item and tail items. One thing to note is that we want to make sure this kind of knowledge transfer is one dimensional. We only want to transfer knowledge from head items to tail items, but we don't want the tail item embeddings to pollute or infect the already well-learned head item embeddings uh, in any ways. So that's a very high level summary. So there are two questions we need to answer, essentially. First, how to define the anchors, and second, how to use the anchors. So mathematically, uh, the first component is what we call source anchor regularization. 
So here, VI represents the embedding of a head item or a popular item or well-learned embedding. And then the A represents the corresponding class anchor embedding. And then we'll apply a L2 distance between them. Note that there is a stop gradient on the uh, head item embedding here. That is, we want to pull the anchor towards the head item, but we do not affect the already well-learned embedding. That's the first part. The second part is how to make use of this class anchor. And similarly, for any tail item uh, embedding V, we find its corresponding class anchor embedding A, and then define an L2 distance <coughs> between them. Note that this time, we have a stop gradient applied on the class anchor. That is, we only want to transfer knowledge from the anchor to the tail items, but we do not uh, let the, the tail item to affect the class anchor. So this is how we achieve this one di directional knowledge transfer from head items to tail items. The proposed technique can actually work uh, with any notion of cluster. You can think of, for example, topic-based uh, clustering or even creators. But here, we propose a hierarchical clustering technique to facilitate this kind of knowledge transfer. One crucial thing here is the granularity of the cluster. This is uh, very important to the, the quality of the cluster anchor. And there is actually a, a bias variance trade-off here. For example, if your cluster is defined to be too big, so there are a lot of items within each cluster, then the cluster will be less homogeneous. So there is a higher a bias. But because there are more items within each cluster, so the var variance will be lower. And on the other hand, if your cluster is very small, then there will be less bias, but higher variance. So that's why we want to propose a hierarchical clustering technique so that it will give you a different choice of granularity. If you go from the higher level, then the, there will be more items within each cluster, whereas if you go lower level, uh, the granularity will be finer. So to, to achieve this, uh, we represent item by embeddings based on their metadata and content, and then we group them into a similarity graph. And then this graph is repeatedly partitioned into balanced clusters so that it will create this kind of tree structure, and then items within each uh, cluster is homogeneous. So this technique is scalable to a large item collection and also gives the flexibility in terms of granularity. And finally, we um, make sure the partitions are balanced. So basically, within each cluster, we have roughly the same number of items. Another challenge is how to measure the improvement in popularity bias. So traditionally, what, what, what is commonly used is the Gini index, but there are a few disadvantages of that uh, metric. First of all, it's a little bit sensitive to small uh, improvement, especially on this kind of head-heavy systems. So even if you have some improvement to popularity bias, it might not be easy to observe uh, using Gini index. And also, uh, it might be affected by experiment size. Uh, and also, it only creates one number. It won't give you a holistic understanding of the situation. So that's why we propose a corpus metric here to measure the effectiveness in reducing popularity bias. So the definition of this metric is actually quite straightforward. We essentially rank the items by their popularity, and then we look at the number of most popular items that accounts for the top P percentage of user engagement. So the, the higher the number means that the, the, the system is more, more, more diverse and uh, less popularity bias. And then given two models, one base model, one experiment model, uh, we just look at the percentage difference between these two models. And this is what we use uh, as a corpus metric. Notice that it's a function of P. So this won't give you just one number. It will give you uh, essentially a line or a, a spectrum of the, 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 the the corpus metric. So this will give us a more holistic understanding of the, the system. So here we present some uh, online A-B testing results on a large uh, short-form content system, recommender system. Um, so first of all, we want to make sure that by improving the tail items, we won't hurt the performance of head items. So by doing this, we are looking at the, the top-line business metrics like the overall enjoyment consumption. So those metrics are neutral. There's no significant ch change in that. And then we saw a drop in unsatisfied uh, consumption. It means that uh, users are actually uh, more satisfied um, with the consumption. 
And finally, if you look at like rate and uh, dismissal, uh, like rate increased and dismissal decreased. So this suggests that the, the, the experiment have improved uh, recommendations. On top of that, we, want, we also want to make sure that the corpus metric also improved. So again, this, this is the corpus metric we just defined. It's like the number of unique items contributing to the percentage of user interaction. So you can see for all items uh, across different P values, they're all positive, meaning that across different uh, item sections, um, the, the, the popularity bias is reduced. Furthermore, if you focus on fresh items, this increase is more significant. So this indi indicates that there's less dominance by the head items and better exposure for tail items. And finally, this is the same Lawrence curve we had before. So you can see that the experiment model is more like closer to the diagonal line, indica also indicating a re reduction in popularity bias. Okay, uh, we have more analysis and insights in the paper, so please take a look if you are interested and drop us an email if you have any questions. Thank you.